Hello dear traders. As promised in my last video, today the focus is on the approaches of the big players in the market. First of all, I would like to emphasize that I am only referring to the big players in the Eurist currency market, as they are demonstrably the largest in the market. In recent years, many experiments have been carried out in Eurist, with the result that the largest big players have partially completely changed or adapted their future strategies. We will look at some examples of this. Before we go deeper into this topic, I would like to address a very important point that could be very interesting for you in the future. Three years ago, I developed a new candle chart, which I have already presented on this blog. It's about the bionic candle, which is more focused on the institutional approach to identify retailers' stops. This modern candle, adapted to the zeitgeist, provides seven times more precise information about the candle strength than the normal candle chart. In this way, you can specifically identify zones of how far a price runs in a certain direction. Likewise, possible turning points in the course can be identified in advance. The advantage of this is that I can plan my trades in advance and whether the resulting risk-reward ratio is worthwhile. The bionic candle works in all-time charts and you can of course continue to work with your usual setup. Since we haven't gathered all the advantages of the bionic candle yet, I have set up a project group on the world's largest trader platform, Forex Factory. At the beginning of this week, the call went out and so far a lot of successful traders have signed up for this project. The videos in English that I specially produced for this purpose have been viewed over 3,000 times in the last few days. This shows how interested traders are in this bionic candle. I would be happy to invite any one of you who would like to take part in this project. Of course you will receive my new, developed bionic indicator for free, but it was only programmed for the MT4 as it does not give as precise information in the futures market as in the forex market. Anyone who has seen my last videos has already been informed that the big players have to collect in the accumulation or distribution phases in order to then turn their orders into a profit. Within these accumulation or distribution phases, an equilibrium arises that 70% dominates the market. Only in 30% of all cases do stronger movements actually occur. First, Let's look at a scenario in Eurist. The price comes from above and an equilibrium now arises on the low, where the big player collects the euro in an accumulation phase. For this he needs ask, which he takes primarily with his limit by orders. Then there may be stop hunting and the price will be pushed up. Now an equilibrium arises again. Where the big player collects further questions in a so-called reaccumulation phase. There may be another stop hunting before an upward breakout. Now the price is being pushed further up and at this point more and more buyers are entering the market. The big player uses this opportunity to exit the euro position with his limit sell orders. Now an equilibrium arises again, with a distribution phase taking place there. That means the big player buys the dollar there. There may be another stop hunting before the course goes down. On the way down, the short traders are repeatedly taken out in a pullback. In the next equilibrium, there will be a redistribution phase, where the big player will continue to collect the dollar. In the now continuing downward movement, it is now gradually rising out of its dollar position. But there is not always a reaccumulation or redistribution phase with the big players. Let's look at an example of this. The big player collects within an accumulation phase and pushes the course upwards. A few hours later he gets out of the euro and is out of the market. First of all, we have to know that in 80% of the cases that big players carry out a collecting campaign. This approach is very time-consuming and he also has to defend his acquired positions. Perhaps you have already wondered why a course always zigzags. Let's take a look at what a big player usually doesn't do. First we see an accumulation in the equilibrium again with a subsequent stop fishing. After that, the course will be driven upwards. Up there, the big player would like to get out of his position in the best possible way, but that will not be possible and why we are looking at now. If a big player collects 500 lot ask in the accumulation phase, he must then push the price upwards. To do this, he will of course first place iceberg orders on the limit sell orders and withdraw them before pushing the price up with market buy orders. 
Nevertheless, he also needs three to four times as many asked to push the price up. At the high, the big player would now have 2,500 lot bids, which he now has to sell to traders who believe in a further upward movement. Of course he will try to push the price down in order to then get the stops of the short traders to get out of the euro. But there is a small problem and that is the time, because it takes a few hours to collect 500 lots. That means it would take 5 times as long to exit. For this reason, he tries to collect 500 lot ask in an accumulation phase and the 2000 lots he needs to push the price up are sold again and again along the way. That is also logical because these 2000 lots only result in an average profit since he did not acquire them at the low. In addition, it would take him far too long to get out of 2500 lots. This is precisely why this approach does not pay off. It is best to get in on the low with 500 ask and get out on the high with 500 bid. And now let's see how it works best. Initially, 500 lots are collected in the accumulation phase. The course is pushed up. To do this, he has to shoot a certain number of asks into the market. Now the first stops of the short traders are triggered and drive the price further up. Now the big player is selling the ask that he used to push the market up. The 500 lot ask that he collected in the accumulation phase are not affected. Now the course is pushed down. This has two advantages, firstly he sells his ineffective ask and secondly he gets the long traders out of the market. He has to get the long traders out, because the moment they get out profitably, they would hold the market up. And now the game starts all over again, press briefly upwards and then sell the ineffective ask. The game will now go on until either a massive number of long traders enter the market or enough short traders are stopped out for the big player to get out of his position. Of course, he could also push the price further up and try to get out of the equilibrium that then arises, but this is a great risk as the market could fall more sharply in this area. Let's take a look at an exemplary price trend. The rate is coming from above and we are seeing an exit from the dollar here. In the subsequent equilibrium, the euro is collected and then there is stop hunting. The rate is being driven upwards and the euro is being bought. There is another stop hunting because there were too many long traders in the market at this point. The price is going up again and the big player is getting out of the euro. Here we are now seeing an entry into the dollar and the rate will continue to be pushed up. Here, too, the dollar is still being collected but the volume in the market is not always that high, so that the big player cannot collect as much bids here. Now we see a strong downward movement triggered by the long traders. In the subsequent equilibrium, the main collecting point takes place in the dollar area and the rate is now moving more sharply downwards. Let's talk again about these three crucial movements and how they came about. In stop hunting, the big player initially invests a large number of market sell orders. These trigger the first stops of the long traders, which creates a downward chain reaction. At the low, the big player sells the dollar, which causes the price to rise massively again. With this approach, the big players take smaller and smaller partial profits with them. Here the big player sells his unneeded ask orders and also invests brand sell orders. At the low, the dollar is sold in the form of market orders, driving the market back up strongly. In the latter case, the big player pushes the price into the stops of the long traders with massive market sell orders. This creates a massive downward breakout. Here we can now see the main meeting point, where the big player collects another bid with limit sell orders. The market sell orders that he invested from the high to trigger the downside breakout are of course not sold because they are above the main focal point. As I explained in detail, there are three basic strategies. We have already discussed collecting in the accumulation phase in great detail. The second option is to make volume available to yourself. This works very well, for example, with a currency exchange from a large customer or in which the big player opens a hedge position at the same time. Two big players were involved in this calculation, which is why each big player only gets 9,000 ticks per hour. The third possibility, here the price is simply pushed up and the market sell orders are sold in an upper equilibrium. This approach is not as efficient. In my research at the time, we were able to determine that collecting within an equilibrium phase and making self-volume available produced similar results. 
The reason why the big players are making more and more of their own volume available is the fact that they are on the market regardless of the volume. Because they need a high volume when they join and also when they exit. Let's us see how it works. The big player invests 1000 lot market buy orders which he accepts at the same time as his own 1000 lot limit sell orders. He pushes the price down and exits the dollar position at the low with limit buy orders. The big player is now pushing the price massively upwards, with the short traders being stopped out here. After that, the price slowly goes down and it is here that it collects more ask. Now he tries to push the price in the direction of profit, again the short traders are stopped. Here, too, there is a strong breakout candle, because everyone thought it was going short here. By the way, you can identify these zones beforehand with my bionic candle. In the end, the big player got out of his euro position and made a good profit. In order to know what is happening in the market at any time, I work with specially created limit orders that inform me about the current situation. In summary, it can be said that the big players are increasingly entering the market through their own liquidity that they make available. This saves you an enormous amount of time and you can make a profit much faster with this measure than with a normal collection campaign. We will of course talk more about these strategies over the next few months. Incidentally, I would be very happy if I could welcome one or the other of you to my project at Forex Factory. I wish you all the best in trading. Kind regards Michael.